Good evening. Uh, welcome to Easy Eaters Online Painting Club. My name's Danny. Says it right down there at the bottom of the screen. An interesting evening. I'm a little bit late, which I'd like to apologise for, because I've been dealing with two new members to the household. I now have two new lovely little cats in my house, and they are a handful. Um, so I've been kind of running around trying to dodge them to get into the studio in here because they really like it in here and it's not okay because there's just stuff everywhere um, and it's dangerous for them and also they'll just trash it <laughs> it's a show so I've been meticulously trying to move them around and kind of get around the house a little bit uh, but they are a bundle of joy they're absolutely brilliant uh, my partner didn't sleep very much last night I did so that's all right I don't really mind <laughs> about that um, yeah because 2 a.m. zoomies apparently I didn't hear it um, yeah, a little bit of bed, you know, uh, climbing on the bed, using it as a climbing frame. But other than that, it was absolutely fine, really. Um, again, absolutely sweltering heat here in the studio. So I've got the fan positioned in the background. You can see it there, trying to bit, blow a little bit of heat over here. So if it is disturbing, do let me know, um, because I can always turn it off and move things around a little bit. But just trying to kind of get a little bit of breeze in here. It always seems that on a, on a day where I'm running the show, it's like 22 degrees and this this room just builds up like a pressure cooker throughout the day. Um, so yeah, anyway, if you are new here, um, Easy Eat isn't, an, uh, isn't a, it is online, absolutely it is online. It isn't a tutorial um, show by any stretch. Uh, there's loads of that stuff already out there. This is merely a place where you can come, uh, make some friends over there in the live chat with these guys who are waiting patiently and uh, you know, you can kind of just kind of get your painting done. You can kind of get all your, you know, your hordes of uh, unpainted grey plastic uh, that I've got lying about all over in the studio here. I'm sure we've all got some. And you can kind of go, you know, just celebrate your victories or talk about something that's not working so well or kind of just kind of share some tips or anything like that. That's what this is all about. Um, I've had a really big tidy up in the studio, uh, which has been needing to be done since I pretty much moved the show into the studio here. Uh, I still got a kind of a, like a little bit of sorting out and arranging to do, but now there is a lot of space here. Um, which there was never before. Those of you that have seen here will know there is now a lot of space over here behind me and I'm going to start dressing the studio up soon and kind of making it look a little bit better because it is a little bit um, it's still a little bit kind of cluttered. It needs it needs some sort of arranging and stuff. And I try in the background. You can see all like my filing stuff and whatever. That's all just like kind of like game scenery and terrain and collections and things. It would be kind of nice to have a better system of it all um, and I think I'm gonna hide that eventually I think and kind of dress it up and make it a little bit more like a studio and get some studio things in here <clears throat> you know some nice lights and things like that um, the sound on my microphone is a little bit duff so if my voice is a little bit muffled do tell me um, my headset is, is a little bit poorly it doesn't really work very well so it might just be at my end my voice sounds like I'm talking behind a wall um, but I can see my little, you know, bar moving or whatever. Um, you know, I, I, I can see that my sound's going through. But if it is difficult to hear me, if anything's wrong with the video, anything like that, just let me know, and I'll see if I can give us a little bit of an on-the-fly uh, fix. <clears throat> There's some people joining us in the live chat. We've got Jeff Lacey. Oi, oi, hi, Dad. Thanks very much for coming along. We've got Stafford Corsi. Evening. Darren Venomous. Good evening. Hi. Thanks for coming along, guys. Dave Lester's just joined in there. Good evening. Uh, Stafford Corsi says, I need a new project. Martini team is complete. German tanks are all painted. I've got loads of stuff if you want to come up in here and help me out, man. Um, I've got loads of Tyranids to paint. I've got buildings to paint. I've got cars to paint. I've got Admech to paint. I've got Space Marines, Orcs, you name it. I've got it. It's here. And there's loads of tanks as well. And a cheeky little TARDIS. Cool. So, I haven't done very much last week because I've had cats. And I've been planning for cats. And I'm also doing my maths exams as well. Last one's coming up on this Monday. Um, so, yeah, t time is still not on my side, but it's not against me at the moment. I've done I've done a little bit of kind of redoing the stuff I did last night on, on last week's show. Not that everything that I did was a waste of time. It was just kind of just topping it up a little bit, changing the colour, making the layers of the, the sort of paint, the crackle paint that I put on just a little bit neater. Uh, and I've learned some interesting sort of lessons along the way. Today, I haven't really had anything planned at all. I made the schedule for this week's show, literally just put, what are we talking about? Cats, because that's literally been my life for the last few days. Um, so yes, I just kind of want to get in here, have a couple of hours, do some stuff uh, on these bases, um, and, and yeah, try, time to kind of get these things done because it's been so long, really. Anyway, um, 
yeah so if you are doing anything uh, this evening if you are painting any little projects do let me know i'm always interested to see what you guys you guys are doing staff says that he's uh, finished his little gaslands project that's brilliant to hear that's a nice little victory someone finishing something yes Mo no more gray plastic you know, you, you've probably got loads of gray plastic somewhere stuff you need to have a good old dig around see what you can find i'm sure there's something there for, uh, to, to paint this evening um yeah let us know if you want to take some photos stick them up on facebook because we're not just here uh on youtube we're also on on facebook we're on instagram did I get it right? In Instagram? <laughs> rubbish, isn't it? And later on, after the show, we're also going to be on Discord for the Easy 8 After Party, where <coughs> staff says pictures of said cats. Um, I'm going to let them in the studio in, in Discord. So if you want to see the cats, you can meet them semi face to face. So uh, yeah, you can get. Dave says, uh, have you named them yet? You can meet Binker and Dax later on after the show. So if you want to, um, I'm going to let them loose in here, supervised, of course. Um, and see how they get on. They are currently sat outside that door right behind me, um, just waiting. My partner's downstairs with a friend. They're not even interested, not interested in food. They just want to know what's in here. It's a little bit creepy, to be fair. Um, Darren says, Crackle Paint sounds interesting. I'm sure you've seen it before, but I'm going to show you in just a second. I'm going to take you over to the workbench, but before I do that, don't forget that if you do like what we do here, that, uh, like, follow, and subscribe, because every little bit that you do to help me make this show bigger really, really goes a long way and I value everything that you guys do to help me make it that way uh, we've recently had uh, like an influx of new followers on Facebook some new followers on Instagram which is great because I don't do anything on Instagram at the moment because I'm not finishing anything um, and uh, yeah, uh, we've also had some new subscribers to YouTube. We're up to about 58 at the moment, I think, uh, which is a really nice number. But it'd be great if you could share the name of Easy8 um, to your friends, to people at work, or just, I don't know, walk around town with a massive placard saying Easy8 and a link. That would be great. Please do that. Um, yeah, and that would be wonderful. Thank you very much. Um, I am going to take you over to the workbench and let's see if this camera's working. I did a quick check on it. It was working two minutes ago. Here we go. Well, there's a feed. Is it a live one? Yeah, I'm getting good at this. Okay, I have actually learned a little thing about this camera. When I turn the PC on, when I boot up the software for broadcasting, that camera turns on automatically at the same time that one does. And I think it just over this one here. Hello, viewers. I think that one overrides this one and it just kind of needs to be reset. And I think that's a lot of my problems, which is great to know that if that is what it is, then I can deal with that fantastic uh Stafford says i have 70 odd uh old style assault marines that need building and painting but no interest in 40k at the, at the present that's absolutely fine man uh, and you, you said you don't necessarily like painting do you? you just like to get things done so it's not like you you necessarily have the desire to to just paint stuff you you kind of want to get your game stuff done so um yeah you'll find something i'm sure maybe another gaslands project here is my trigon almost completed it still has some tail work to do i plan to just kind of crack on with that in the near future once i've done that i won't bother you on the show with it anymore but i'll let you know once i finished it and i will put it up on instagram because it's high time that i put something up there but you can see from last week um i was i, I did on this side of the base over here i did with um, a ghrelin earth texture which is just basically like a, a sandy paint almost and then on this side of the base i did um crackle paint um, so the idea with crackle paint, Darren, is uh, that basically when you put it down, it dries, and it rapidly shrinks, and it makes these big lumps, and it looks like a, a dry riverbed. The, the product that I was using um, is the, the green stuff world. It, it, you can't really see down here; it's rubbed away. But it is Badlands is the color, which is that really nice grey color. Um, they green stuff world do a really good measure of this stuff. It is. Uh, 2.2 fluid ounces or 60 millimeters milliliters beg your pardon um, you can get crackle paint from Citadel um, this one's called a ghrelin earth it's a slightly different color I do prefer the color of, of this one um, for my scheme Citadel version is very very good it's just expensive isn't it and you you do use a lot of this sort of texture paint to get the effect over a large sort of area and after doing a few bases on monsters you tend to go through a pot and it is quite expensive so i was trying out the green stuff world one because it's obviously got a larger quantity it's still very good but it leaves much larger spaces between the cracks and and i think that the the citadel version dries with a much better finish so um once i'd done the painting last week 
I came back to it the following day, about 24 hours later, and it had completely dried. It looked really good, but the cracks were just huge between, you know, between all the chunks. So um, I painted over it again with exactly the same stuff, and the, the cracks are much smaller. They don't look as neat as they do, but I do prefer the spacing between all the cracks. What it did show me was that because I, I was painting the base black um, underneath, um, so that when it splits, when it cracks, you have a color underneath of your chosen, um, of, your, your, of your choice. Some people use that to their advantage and they do some really kind of weird psychedelic colors like pinks and greens or, you know, some sort of weird lava mix or whatever where you have a black crackle paint and like a lava scheme underneath. And that looks really good, but it looked, it looked weird when the cracks were so big and it was black. So what I've decided to do is to paint the bases. I believe it was um, Scape and Blight Dinge. I can't quite remember now. I'm sure it was this one. I've got some paints lying around it's all over the place. It could have been that one. It could have been the Storm, Lay Storm Vermin Fur. I think it was Dinge. It's ever so slightly darker than this color and it gives a really nice um, sort of contrast when it splits. You get a slightly darker gray underneath. I've been using this little base here. I've been trialing lots of different um, combinations and things and, and paints. This color here, this is that um, Skaven Blight Dinge. It's quite a nice color. I've been mixing with different things to see what sort of textures I got. This one here was mixed with a um, flow improver. This one here was mixed with a, um, a, a retardant medium, which slows it drying. And then I sort of over here was um, just mixed with uh, some more crackle medium. Uh, and that just made the cracks go really, really tiny, which is actually um, uh, something that this product does this this Vallejo crackle crackle medium just makes really tiny cracks and I was wondering if I mixed it what would it do the byproduct is it turns it into really small cracks also I really liked it when I mixed it with flow improver it actually seemed to create sizable chunks so in the future I might where I'm gonna put this stuff down put a little bit of flow improver down put the paint on it and I think it will make some nice size cracks that looks actually quite nice I like that good nip anyway so that's crackle paint the idea is it just kind of dries rapidly um, dries shrinks and then creates these splits you can get crackle paste for sort of art projects and you can mix paints in it but it doesn't work anywhere near as well as what these very specific paints do so if you're interested in doing that do experiment there are experiments out there on YouTube it's about finding the right blends and ratios of paints to um, uh, the, the product that you're you know, the, the, the particular paste that you're going to use I'd be very interested to see what people did if they did that what you can see on the end here is that one that was mixed with the um, the paint retarder is absolutely shocking don't do that <laughs> uh, what is the price of the green stuff world pot um, I can't remember off my head it wasn't very expensive I think it was about four nearly five pounds which is really really good and it goes a long way um, as where if you buy the Citadel one, which is 17, um, 17 milliliters, 12 milliliters, um, so a considerable size difference. Obviously, you can see that clearly. This was about three and a half pounds, I think. It's, a, it's about the going price. I honestly can't remember, and I wasn't prepared for that sort of a question. Um, so, but either way, even if those prices are only remotely close, you can tell by the volume of paint that you get in this one, it's way more worth trying to um, learn how to get good. Um, results with this one than getting really good results out of the pot I think anyway that's that's a personal opinion but the Citadel one is very very good Darren says I'm wondering whether it will give the effect of paint flaking off burnt out tanks it could do actually um, that might be something that I can do um, in like a little how-to or something like that you might be more interested in going to the Vallejo um, crackle medium which is this one here um, because it makes very very small flakes and you could kind of scratch them and pick them off and once they come you know it's very easy to make them loose and I, I like to kind of put a layer of varnish over them to seal them in um, so if you wanted to kind of do like um, flaking paint they are quite chunky so you could put it on really really thin that might be interesting again would be very interested to see some results on that so what am I going to do today you can see that I've actually painted the color of this one because the color of the dirt on the back of this base was this color, but I wanted to blend it in. I'm looking for a color that will blend the both of them together. I really like this color, so what I did is I just really watered it down and just painted it over the top. I might do a little bit of dry brushing um, 
but it's going to be very difficult getting that dry brushing in and around the tail over here. Um, so, um, yeah, I'm going to do a bit more painting on the colours over there. I've got some rocks and stuff to kind of go on that base, but um, that's boring. <laughs> and going over to the Khan effects, what I'm going to do, I did some more on, on this just at the end of last week's show. I went onto the Discord, spoke with the guys on Discord for a, about an hour, and while I was chatting away, I just did a little bit on this on this little like piece of alien terrain thing made the tentacles all shaded basically stopped it from being such a bright color on the pink and the yellow did a lot of washing on it i'm going to add a little bit of dry brushing i think a little bit of pink back into those purples and then i'm also going to start putting the um the crackle paint on this base here um just needs a bit of dusting because it is a bit dusty there so if i just get a brush in here there we go and I'm also going to paint this base um, Skaven Blight because, like I said earlier, I like to have a different base colour underneath rather than black. That's a recent decision of mine. So, yes. Um, Jeff says it might look a little bit like burnt steel in, in paint. Um, and Darren says, I think it's worth the experiment. Yes, I, yeah. If, if you do make an experiment with it, I want to see it. So let me know because I think it'll be really cool to see. Let's get, let's just get some paint on the go, shall we? Let's just do it because it's it's been a bit of a weird, <laughs> it's just a bit of a weird week. I'm just looking forward to chilling out a little. Um, yeah, cats, man. Unfortunately, boy cat. I've got a boy and a girl. They're brother and sister. Boy cat's a bit poorly, um, and it has had unfortunately the runs. Um, and that might just be because you know, new house, new environment, a bit of nerves or whatever. Um, but just before just before the show started, he had an accident downstairs. On a stone floor but wasn't very pleasant after cleaning up from the previous one tiny bit of blood in it as well so a little bit of concern there bless his cotton socks I'm gonna be keeping an eye on him but generally he's okay he's pretty happy um, and they're really really chilled out so later on when I let him into the studio hopefully they'll be way well behaved they're not gonna be there are they they're not gonna be uh let's find a nice brush all my brushes are all kind of mixed up at the moment because like i said i had a bit of a tidy up in here so i'm just going to go through this big assortment of brushes that i've got this is one that i normally use my army painter one and it's actually it's a really good um identifier orange orange end that's my kalinsky brush there we go so there it's so warm in here man so warm so i think i'll probably get some good coverage out of the kalinsky just had some brush restorer in there, so just gonna wash that out a second. I think that my camera might be slightly out of position because the cats did get in here yesterday and were jumping up and all over the place, and it looks like they might have bumped into the camera. So I might struggle trying to get in shot. <laughs> let, let me know if I'm struggling. <laughs> uh, yeah, Jeff says it could always scrape it off again. I suppose that's in reference to the, the crackle paint, isn't it? Yes, yeah, you can. It comes away quite easily. bit of water to this paint here and I'm just gonna get ever so quickly a nice layer on this base you can see that it's actually a nice dark gray it's quite a warm gray but it feels a bit weird calling a gray a warm one because they seem to be quite neutral but this one's got like ever so slight brownish tones to it um, and it does give it a slightly warmer feeling I don't necessarily want like the best coverage on it I, I don't want it to be really streaky or really thin um, but I do I don't really mind um, if it's hot or halfway house because the crackle paint is not going to show that much of it it's interesting again painting on the carnifex because I can see the old grey work, the old carapace work that I've done on it that I've since developed and improved on the Trigon. It's interesting to see your old work. It feels like these little projects have been going on for such a long time and they have. They, they absolutely have. Um, so it would be really good that when I move on to the next project for Tyranids that um, I see how quick I can do it. Because the idea is of course is to improve your technique to the point where the painting looks really really good 
and better than the last time, but also faster. A little bit of overspill there. I do like to edge my um, Tyranny bases with a light grey. That is the highlight grey that I use on the carapace pieces. Um, some discussion with friends way back when we decided that the light grey was a, was a, a sort of a colour that kept in keeping, kept the tone of the Tyranids um, without sort of making a, a distraction away from the animal itself. Um, but was also quite, it was it was a nice bright colour that that sort of made the Tyranid stand out on the base, which is really cool. It was just a lucky sort of happen chance. We were just like, oh, maybe this one will work, and it did. can't see right an awful lot right now because the can effects is so low to the base I have to get it into weird positions just to be able to see what I'm doing which is why of course I'm not going to be going mental with any sort of diorama on this base just because you're never going to see it And it's different if you are, you know, painting something that is going to be photographed a lot or you're doing it deliberately for sort of studio things because it's going to be photographed much more down the same level, is it? Perhaps. <laughs> Maybe not. But, um, like, all the Games Workshop box art and things like that, they all show it from the sides because, well, that's what you want to show. But on the tabletop, you're never really down that, that sort of level. going in and around the feet there last little bit okay I think that's that color done that I think is just a little bit better than the black it's not so stark a contrast Depending on the cracks, it may actually not be um, that noticeable with the colour change. Cool. One thing that I did notice from, from last week was um, the base is very flat. So if I go back to the trigon here, just bring it at this sort of level. The base is very flat and uninspiring, so with future monster builds at this sort of size, even the Carn effects really, is I will add texture and shape to the to the base just by putting a bit of putty down or something, you know, just letting it dry so it's got some sort of undulations and lumps and bumps and things. And then when I put the crackle paste over the top, or when I put other texture paste over the top, it will still have that texture, but it will be over some sort of shape, so it doesn't just look like, you know, it's a... <laughs> You know, a tiled floor that's got some dirt on it, which is pretty much what it looks like at the moment. Uh, Jeff says, uh, lots of nids on Facebook of late. Uh, are they making some sort of a comeback or something? Some nice paint jobs, lots of colour on some. Yes, they, they are. Um, we're getting some messages coming through from the community. Just having a little look at those. Yeah, we're getting lots of... Um, getting lots of uh, interest lately because... Tyranids have recently had their Codex release. I think they've had a release anyway. But it is one of the armies that is um, that is, very, you know, is, is current, um, and people have been like all over them 
so yeah people are just like super interested in the latest releases because you know it's the competitive list isn't it uh apparently Tyranids is probably their best moment that they've had they've had some strong recent releases in terms of rules um so it's nice to see them actually staying staying up there competitively i'm not a competitive player i just like the concept i just like a lot of the artwork um and i just like playing bugs i like the idea that just kind of their space locust that's cool and um, some of the monsters are just kind of wicked right she's cool Go. Um, also, purple tongue, red tongue. Which do you prefer? Interesting discussion. So, let's talk about getting some colour on this. So, what I want to do now is I want to add a little bit of highlights to the pink, a little bit to the yellow, but the tiniest amount. Um, in fact, I'm not even really that worried about the yellow. I'm going to go straight in for some pink. This is the pink that I was using, Vallejo Squid Pink. It's almost identical to Citadel um, Tentacle Pink. I think it's Tentacle Pink anyway. They might have changed the name of it since the last time I've seen it. Because I use Vallejo quite a bit, it's been, it's been a while since I've seen a lot of the Citadel. The core range, really. Jeff says red for the tongue. Give that a spin on the Wazomatic. Wait for it. He'll say it. It's coming. I'm gonna get some... Sort of a dry brush go here, I think. Is this a good brush to use? I'm trying to find a decent dry brush that isn't gonna get it all over the pink. Let's worry about that in a second. Let's actually just see if I can get a good aim. So, just a little bit of pink on the end of my brush. It's a very purpley sort of a pink. I think the Citadel one is slightly more pinky, if that makes sense. But I like this colour. Still a lot coming out there, even though I rubbed it off the tissue. There you go, it's a bit better over there tissue stay there okay so just I don't want to leave streaks on these I just want to bring a little bit of highlight to just some of the pronounced edges of these tentacles or whatever they are some weird alien stuff they got a wash on them creating a little bit of interest and depth to them a little bit of color change here and there but it has kind of tainted them to be a little bit more on the purple side so I just want to kind of re-establish that pink tone. And because the, the kind of effects are going to be so close to this thing, I'm really not all that fussed about it. It's just a little addition to the base, you know. <laughs> there you go. Stafford in there was a matic. A little bit of pink back on the brush. Okay. Taking it really slowly. I don't want it. I don't want it to be ruined by, you know, too heavy a dry brush. You'll get a chalky streak or something, or a massive build-up, and it will just attract all your attention to it, and it will look rubbish. There we go. Something like that. That's a little bit better. Maybe it's a bit more. I'm enjoying this process. I'm actually avoiding the tissue hold together. All together, all together.
<laughs> Jesters, I gave you some cheap brushes. No good? Uh, they probably are. They're just... I, I've been so busy with the cats, I haven't even really kind of gone through them yet. Thank you very much for the brushes, by the way. Very, very kind. Also gave me some, like, interesting plant pieces and stuff so I can make some alien sort of flora to go with the bases. I don't know if they'll make it on tonight, but they might make it on the final cover. There we go. Look at that. We're all nice and pink now. That's that's pretty cool. Let's just put that brush in there. Just give that a clean. I've got pink hands now. Lovely. So I want to add a bit of colour to these little spiky bits in here, little teethy things. I don't know. These like spiked teeth pit, uh, sphincters. Very peculiar. And we've got some spiky bits going up the side. I was saying to the community last week, uh, should these be tentacles or spikes? And everybody went, spikes. So let's make them a nice bony colour. So where is my bony colour? I'm going to put white on first because for some reason... Um, Oh no, I was going to say that the bone white doesn't cover very well, but actually right here I do have Screaming Skull, so that will save me a little bit of a trip. What I was worried about there was bone white is the Citadel version of Screaming Skull, ever so slightly different in its in its tone. This one's a little bit white, a little bit paler, this one's a little bit more, I don't know, antique is probably a good word, but it has, this one has very poor coverage, worse than the white, so I often like undercoat it with a normal white colour and then put this one over the top, but I don't need to do that because this Screaming Skull has quite a, a thick pigment to it. So, gonna give that a bit of shake. Give it a waz. On the wazomatic. Dave Lester came into the studio the other day and he's like, is that it? Is that, is that the wazomatic? I was like, put your finger in it, Dave. He wazzed his finger. You're welcome. <laughs> There we go, so let's just get a little bit of this out. I'm going to add just a little bit of water to it, just so that I can get a nice smooth application, but not too watered down because, again, it doesn't really matter about the quality of this so much, um, but I don't want it to go so thin that I have to do like two or three coats, I kind of just want it done in one really, because I'm lazy today. I think I've just watered that down too much. Oh well, looks like I might be doing two or three layers. That is the painting god saying, do it properly, Danny. Okay. So, I think what I'll do is I'll practice doing the side ones first, because they're bigger and easier to do. And obviously I need to kind of focus in a little bit and have a little practice before I do the little tiny ones in there. So this will probably be like a good warm-up, if you like. Now coverage isn't too bad. Make sure I'm in there. Uh, <laughs> Dave Lester says, thumbs up. <laughs> Dave was practicing the other day some rust skills. Painting some old 40k terrain that you could just use for any old game, right? But he wanted to make it look like they were rusty. And it looked really good. We talked about like, different colours to use a rust. Um, browns and oranges and you know contrasts and things. So like, really bright oranges against really dark browns and things. And then sponging them on. And I think I think it was a really good result. concentration voice again and we all know you know when he's concentrating because he's not saying anything sure that I get the um, 
the edges of the different colours nice and tidy because this little bony colour does stand out quite a bit against especially the pink and if I make like a little mistake or I miss a little bit or I don't kind of cut in nice and tidy it shows up quite strong so just taking the time to make sure that that's done well will pay off just a couple more to go on this side here I don't know if I'm going to worry about having a second coat. I might give it a quick brush stroke over, perhaps. Mostly I'll just come in with some seraphim over the top. Just like I've done on all the claws and the teeth on the Tyranids. Oh man, I tell you what, it is, it is warm in here. One more spiky thing to go. Lovely. Okay, we've got some nice colours on there. It's kind of looking cool, right? I'm just going to come in and wash the brush out with a fine tip now just see if I can get those teeth done in there and then I'll drop another little bit of washing on the top of those and that should just help define them because I'm probably going to find I'm going to lose a little bit of definition just as I go over with this colour try to not wipe any of the paint off that I've just put on I'll start on this one here because it seems to be the closest sure that I'm in shot, I haven't really checked that for a while. Yep, I'm good, I'm in there. It's a pretty terrifying looking thing, isn't it? Whatever this is, this little plant. It's supposed to be an infestation node. And it came with a gene stealer box set. Um, you get like a couple of them on the sprue. And gene stealers can obviously infiltrate. So is this something that they use for like, just hiding in or coming out of? Does it spawn them? Is it like entrance to a secret passageway? Or is it just representative of you know very much in my favorite style of hg wells's war of the worlds is it is it basically an analog of the red weed just as a byproduct of the tyrannies being there this is just one of their plants and it says if you've got these on the table now nah, you're infested <laughs> gonna get the exterminator around you've got a bug problem Definitely won't want to put your hand in that, though, would you? Some sort of weird Venus flytrap thing. Oh, messed that little bit off at the top there. Just coming with a little bit of water. Let's see if I can just take that back a little bit. Nice. I've got one more to go.
Speaking of that little warm up really helped. Seeing a few little bits and pieces on the way that I haven't quite caught, so I just like to stop occasionally and just go back and readdress them. But that is <laughs> me getting distracted halfway through a paint job going, oh, I'll go over here and paint this. Oh, I'll go over there and paint that. Never actually finishing what's right under my eye. That is one of the signs of ADD. I think it's a small part of the bigger picture as to why I don't really get stuff finished. Cool. I like it. I think it looks really cool. Wash that brush out. I'm just going to put another dollop of this colour, add a little bit of water, and I'm just going to give those spikes just one more quick pass. That's looking pretty good. Yeah. All right. I'm happy with that. Those edges are nice and tidy. Wonderful. Quarter two already. The time is flying, isn't it? It never feels like you get an awful lot done. These hobbies are ever going, ever going, ever lasting. You know what I mean. So let's get some seraphim sepia. I love seraphim. Give it a bit of a shake just because I like to. There we go. And I'm just going to drop this on to those um, teeth and onto those claws on there. And then I'll come back in with another pass of the white just to sort of, you know, highlight them up again. Put those layers of depth in. going in there very well, I'm not putting enough in. Because these claws are always pointing up on the sides here, one of the things that I like to do with my seraphim, see here, my brown stains on the claws, like I was doing on the trigon, is I like the stain to be denser at the base and lighter towards the point. And because these are all pointing upwards, it all runs down naturally anyway. So I just make sure that I get a good filter over the whole thing, make sure it gets a good cover, and then it should just start running down and just pooling at the base. Ok, 
Okay, it's working. Wonderful. So I'll just give that a chance to dry. There. While that's drying, uh, I will have a little look at the other bits and pieces that I need to do. So I still want to get these rocks painted. I've still got these um, little uh, features for um, the Trigon's base. They're just like little cork rocks. I've decided that actually painting them before I glue them on will be a good idea. Because just painting them when they're in on this base here is just going to be too difficult. Um, so yeah. There's something stuck to my worktop. Um, yeah, so I'm going to give these a bit of a paint, give these a bit of a paint, I'll dry brush them all up, make them all look nice, um, and then I'll edge that base, and then I'll, I'll, I'll stick some floor on it a little bit later on, but actually I think generally that that's kind of done, really. What I am trying to do is I'm, I'm trying to find, from Green Stuff World, uh, a paint from the standard um, acrylic range that matches this colour, so that when I do a, a, other sort of textures on the base I can use a, um, a, a colour just to blend it all in together to make it look like it's all a part of the same sort of terrain map um, which I think would be nice because the colours that I've got don't really work all that well so yeah um, well, it, it's that it's that warm in here today that wash is almost dry on there which is quite absurd that's how warm it is today yeah so I've done the colour on here Literally, I'm just waiting for that to be finished so I can stick it on there and then I'll start putting the crackle paint on and around it. So while I'm waiting for that to dry, I think I'll just get on dry brushing. Let's do some dry brushing. What brush shall I use? Hmm. Could give this one a go. It's nice and soft. It's got a rounded sort of head. That might be quite nice. Um, or I could go in a bit more of an aggressive one because I've got some aggressive shaped rocks. Here is my large dry brush from Citadel. It's a little bit on the coarse side, it could do with a bit of a clean. Let's give it a clean, see what happens. The problem with it being so dry and coarse is it will just scratch paint straight back off again. So with this brush cleaner, it's going to need a lot more than that. I'm going to pour it directly into the bristles. That's probably just old paint and rubbish and stuff in there. Softer yet? Yeah, a bit softer. And when the suds start changing colour, you know that there was a, a paint in there, it looks a little bit tainted. Let's see what comes out. Add a bit of water. Really work that paint cleaner in there. Give it a wash through. Yeah, I can see some old yellows and stuff in there. That, so I had a, a yellow on it, and then whatever colour over the top was hiding that yellow. So this is when I first started doing my Tyranids, I was painting them yellow and dry brushing them. This colour is starting to be tainted here, so you can see it is it's starting to do its work. Let's put a bit more in there. I can see some silvers in there as well, so I've used this for everything. I have abused this brush. <laughs> Normally you get like a lot of paint build up in the ferrules, but this one actually seems to be, because it's a dry brush I suppose, it's dried actually in the edges and the tips of the bristles, creating quite a quite a coarse you know, brushing edge, which isn't what you want. I'm going to keep those bristles slightly damp because, as I've already worked out, a moist bristle is very good for dry brushing. A pure dry brush is not what you want. Already do a soaking in something overnight, I think, but he's much softer than he was. You can see that when I move the bristles, there's a bit of clumping here. And that is just indicative of, of old paint drying in it. And you can see it, you can see the paint in there, so it's not like you know, a hard thing to work out but that should be good enough for doing these brushes here so I think I'm gonna give them a bit more of a 
just a, 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 you know, standard colour on there. Might use this gave and bite. Dinge. Dinge, that's a good word. And washing these stones and giving them a dry brush will really show up a lot of the natural textures because they're real stones they've got some real nice sort of textures and patterns on there and it will really show that up so I'm looking forward to actually getting getting something interesting on the trigons base because it is a little bland like I say it's a little on the flat side I really wanted to get this on last week but it turned out that just getting the paint in and around the Trigon's tail was just, that was two hours worth of work really. <laughs> so the whole show was just me painting a base with one type of paint. Right, we'll just put that one, oh, I've painted it now and I haven't really thought about that. I'll put it on my palette just there. Cool, back to this one. I quite like this colour. Skaven Blight Dinge. I do like it when I see people painting their bases with lots of different kind of colours that all lend into like one sort of colour way, if, you, if that makes sense. So like a Martian landscape isn't just all red, is it? It's got lots of greys and, you know, sort of different types of browns and oranges and things in there but the grey rocks really show through the, the, the red dust and I really struggle to kind of get colours that work and I, and I how then to kind of mix them or blend them and, and, and have them showing through so I have thought about using slightly different colours for my grey bases but I just haven't really kind of nailed it yet so I just kind of experiment and I play and I'm just playing around different hues of different greys and things and seeing what what works and hopefully you know I'll just I'll hit the mark one day just by accident I'll put you there this one's almost dry already because that's how warm it is in the, in the studio today come back to those in a minute I suppose right here's pretty much time for a quick break so what I'm gonna do uh, is I'm gonna take us away to the intermission screen like I always do at this time of the show um, <laughs> Stafford says sorry guys I've got to go and collect a child I'll try to get back before the show ends alright man take it easy your children are important off you go see you in a bit hopefully we'll see you before the show ends um, yeah what was I saying um, I can't remember. Yes, we're going to go. <laughs> we're going to go for a break. And what I'm going to do through the break is I'm just rather than risking going out there and letting the cats in, I'm, I'm just going to carry on here. Uh, I'm going to just highlight these little white bits that I've done on there uh, with the same bone white colour again. And then I'm just going to try and glue him on. I think just just get him straight on. That can't affect space. I got the hiccups there. I'm so sorry. Go stick him in there, and then I'm going to work on um, just getting the crackle paint in getting those rocks on the trigon and then hopefully that'll be a nice little bit of the show and I, I think I'm done I've got to edge the bases and then call it call it done call it done oh mm. that's a good cup of tea and it's cold but I need it cold anyway I'll be back in 10 minutes in the meantime you should definitely go and change your paint water go make it happen see you in a minute
welcome back. I've been doing just as I said I would be doing, so I've just been cracking on with a little bit of painting. Um, I didn't go and change my paint water. There's no point. The amount of paints I'm going to be using today are going to be just chalking all that up anyway. Uh, but you should have done, so I hope you did. Um, I've finished doing the highlights on that little piece of Tyranid ter terrain, that little fl flowery thing, whatever it is many mouths um, and I've glued it in place which I'll show you in just a second and I'm just currently now adding the last little bit of that Skaven Blight Dinge, that lovely brownish grey uh, onto these rocks just so I can kind of get like a, a decent coating all the way over them. And I'm just going to put those down and I'll come back to those later on I'll give them a really good dry brushing of different colours and things to see what happens. Still a little bit tacky there from earlier put quite a thick layer of paint on them to cover them. So, I'm burping a lot today. I really apologise. Here is my Carnifex. Um, it's now got a little flowery thing on it. And as you can see, I know it's very small on the camera, but it, it's such a small thing on there. It, it's such a small area that it, it, whatever it is, when you're looking at it, you're going to be looking at it from this sort of angle, you know, so you're never really going to see it anyway. So it's just kind of got this little thing in here. And I think that the colours don't like distract utterly, um, but I think it really works. So let's take it back over to the workbench. Hopefully that camera's still working. Haha, <laughs> yeah, it's good, isn't it? Cool. So literally, I just put a bit of super glue on it because my poly cement's downstairs. And I don't want to go out to the cats right now. Um, super glue will hold it just fine. Um, so yeah, it's, it's just in position here. Um, I, can't, I didn't want it really any further back. I did I did want it to be kind of on display. Um, I chose the best angle for it. So where I've done all the painting on the clawy bits, these ones just looked the best here. The one on the back is you know not the best one out of all of them. So I just kind of wanted a little bit of fun detail just kind of showing off there. I'm now going to surround the whole area in crackle paint. I'm not really going to worry about doing mixtures of uh, you know um, textures and things like I did on the trigon base. Um, and then y later on I might add like you know a little bit of you know flowery stuff on it or whatever. Um, in some time maybe i'll have like some scatter rocks or something like that later um but for now i'm just kind of interested in getting that crackle paint on so what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna get where's my flow improver i've got some airbrush flow improver this is what i mixed a little bit in with this stuff last time uh jeff says i went into the workshop this morning and my four day old paint water had gone bad so yeah <laughs> change paint water yeah yeah some some acrylic paints i have a, like a, obviously they're water based to them some of them some of them don't don't do so well <laughs> yeah change your paint water man change your paint water just give this a bit of a bit of a shake it does have an agitator ball in there but it's so thick this one's really hard to you can't I can just hear it in there. Such a thick paint. I'm going to give it a bit of a, a mix up on the Wasmatic. Stafford's not in the live chat now, so he's not going to kind of jump in and <laughs> Wasmatic in the live chat. And the other side, you can give it upside down as well. I've been told that like the more money you spend on a paint mixer the, the better quality they are and it I don't know I, I remain a bit indifferent on it because that one there cost me about 30 quid and you can buy like a proper like pro artist paint mix called vortex and it's 90 it's the same shape and everything so I know that it's probably one of those things that I just need to have a go on uh, and see the difference but it's quite hard to consider what that difference might actually be where's my little spiky thing gone here it is because it's the nature of this paint it always cakes up in the nozzle so um, just be aware of that so I just get a little bradle and I just kind of shove it down the side <laughs> just now was it dries in the nozzle of this stuff it might be worth doing this after I've kind of used it but just to make sure that it's all nice and clear Pour it now, let it come out. There it is, it is starting to come out, lovely. So, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna pour some of this onto the base, move it around with a brush, and then I'm gonna pour that paint directly onto it and kind of mix them up as I go. I'm just gonna see what happens. And then hopefully I'll get some really nice cracks and things around that plant 
um, and it should look quite natural and I'm hoping it will look like it's kind of lifted up a little bit uh, but that might require some very thick painting in and around that area so let's get some flow improver on here I feel a little bit silly kind of wasting my flow improver but you know we'll see what happens I might shift that around a little bit rather than with a brush I use my spatula or a sculpting tool so that I don't lose any of it through absorbency that looks a little bit better going to go right in it's always worth making sure that the nozzle is clean first on this because if you put pressure on it it just sprays everywhere and you're going to get it all over your model let me come in a bit closer with this this light here so it might be a bit easier to see now you literally just you just go mental with this stuff you just literally pour it on the thicker the better and I'm just mixing it in a little bit with that flow improver And it says on the bottle, don't speed it up with a hairbrush. Uh, hairbrush. <laughs> uh, don't speed it up with an air, um, with a hairdryer, um, because I think that is generally one of the favoured tactics um, for artists using crackle pastes and crackle paints and things. Um, I have sped it up with a hairdryer. I don't see any difference in it. I'm a little bit reluctant to want to use a hairdryer in a studio tonight because it feels like it's a million degrees in here. I am going to do some areas with flow improver and other areas without it. So I just have some like sort of difference in uh, appearance of this paint. So I'm going to do just a normal lump of it here. Just in by the foot there. I'm going to push that in. And I want it to come right up to the edges of the these tentacly things. And hopefully it will look like it's pushing it right up. I might get a brush to kind of push it in there in a bit as well. There's some air bubbles forming in that paint. I don't know if that really affects it. I think it just kind of dries and splits. I don't think really worrying about air bubbles is a problem with crackle paint. Now where I'm trying to sort of push the paint up underneath the foot here, the crackle paint is naturally um, getting thinner when I'm pushing it around and that will make quite a difference in the appearance on the base. So it's quite important to make sure that you get a, at least some sort of consistency with your um, application, I have learned. I don't really want it on his feet, but I do want it up against his feet so that it might look like he's disturbing the ground rather than sinking into it. Oh, it's giving me hand cramp holding onto this one. Okay, now I'm gonna put a bit of flow improver in here. Again, just to kind of, you know, perhaps give it a little bit of variety in how it appears. It does start to break the paint down momentarily until you sort of mix it in. So it's a weird substance. I don't really know what Flow Improver is. In terms of its temp you know, chemical composition, I don't know what, what is a Flow Improver? What makes a paint flow? without watering it down. Peculiar stuff. 
Uh, Jeff says, I was just thinking it would make a good post-apocalyptic road surface. It might cost a little bit, but you can buy crackle paint in massive tubs um, and they're much more affordable. So if that's something you're thinking about, definitely, definitely go for that. Um, however, the Green Stuff World stuff is really, really good. Um, yeah, give it a go. Buy some, it's only a few quid. So you can see that I'm literally just really caking it on. And even really, that is a little too too thin in most of these places. So um, I'm going to get a bit more in underneath there now. Just in by his left foot here. Washing up liquid is a good flow improver. Is that because it disturbs the, the water tension? Is that essentially what a flow improver is doing with the paint? Interesting. And this particular formula I got here is, is specifically for airbrushes, although I, I do use it with brush. I do notice a difference with it, which is why I have it. front here now and just get it down in there I'm just trying now to be really careful about getting it too much on his feet on her feet his feet feet. I think she's a she. Okay, let's get a little bit of flow improver in there again. Just a drop. Another bit of flow improver just on the front here as well, and then I can move it around. Now I'm going to put a bit of this paint in the palette here, and I'm going to use a brush and the edge of my palette now to just kind of smush it into where I need it to go. Use the fine point here. Oh, it just says yeah. Oh, okay, so it disturbs the, the the water tension, surface tension of the water. Sorry, that makes a bit of sense. Stops it from kind of clinging onto the side. whatever it's touching. Actually, now I'm looking for it, I can actually see that actually affecting in that way. I can see it rather than, you know, when it attaches to like another surface, it would creep up a little bit. I can see it not actually doing that. Where this flow improver is. this little um, spatula is working quite well over a brush at the moment so I'm literally just picking up a big blob on the end and then just getting it right in close and just kind of bulging it so as I press it down it squishes around sideways a little and what I'm starting to see now is like there's a little bit of rise actually beside and it looks like it's kind of pushed up from underneath and I quite like that so I'm just going to build up a bit more just around the outside of this bit here. Hopefully, it'll make it look like it's pushing up through the ground. A little bit on my fingers here. Make sure that's nice and dry before I handle the Khan effects. Well 
difficult to get you into shot here. Apologies if you're struggling to see. Okay, I've got one more bit to do, which is just in here, on this side, <laughs> in the under this foot here. It's really hard to show you. Uh, Jeff says, uh, if you're spraying down terrain with water PVA mix, you put a bit of washing up liquid in it, and it helps it sink into the grass in the bushes. Ah, oh, interesting. I was wondering, actually, how you would achieve that. That's really good to know. So if you like using different flocks and static grasses and things, that helps you kind of get thick, viscous PVA down. But if you obviously water it down, it just kind of runs everywhere. Interesting. The things you learn, huh? Bit by bit, just building this, this scene up here, this texture paint. It is hard going. You have to be patient. really had my tongue sticking out then as well. <laughs> Concentration face. Okay, still gonna need more. Let's get some more of this in here. I might just put a little drop of improver in there. I've already had some in there. Let's put another one in. Lovely. This flow improver might have just had like a one-off result on my little test that I did the other day and it might be the worst thing I could be doing to it but you know me I can't resist you know an experiment or just going for it I'm just one of those people that's just got to try it all the time it might be rubbish who knows I think, I think it's all in there. I'm getting it all over my hands now. I'm now going to just build up a little bit more. Again, around the, the raised edges here. In a hope that it looks like it's pushing up from the ground, pushing up through the ground rather. I want it to be a bit more bulgy here. Smear the edges down there so there's no overhang from the edges. Got a little bit on the table there, but that's fine. Okay, it's it's all on. Right, let's wash the little spatula off. Because this paint does get everywhere. Lovely, it's on my hand. Uh, that was a little bit on the bench here. Okay, it's fine. Well, let's put this away. Put that away. I said I was going to give that a bit of a stab through, didn't I? You see how much it clogs up there already. So I'm just going to push through. Stab it in a bit. There we go. Now, it will take several hours to dry properly, probably even overnight. So um, I will take some pictures of it tonight after the show, before I go to bed, let you know how it's kind of 
developing and I'll also take some pictures of it tomorrow so you can see what it's like once it's fully cured a little bit of an air level there that didn't really do the job I wanted to, never mind it can just go away like that then brilliant so nice and thick layer all around not the normal way of painting one really thick coat you can see that it's starting to shrink if I just get it in the light you can see little creases starting to appear in the skin of it see that and those will give way later on and they will dry out and they will turn into proper thick slabs um, which would look really cool now I'm gonna come back to these bad boys and I'm gonna give them a bit of a dry brushing I'm not really sure what color I'm gonna hit them with yet um, let's just work our way through the regular colors that I normally use So I'm going to work my way through these colours here. Um, I've got a bit of Eschen Grey, got a bit of Dawnstone. I've also got a little bit of um, Storm Vermin. So I might use that instead of one of these. Maybe. Yeah, I'll just give them all a go. Let's see what happens, right? If I use this brush here, just to scoop some out. I think that's actually. Is that, is that going to be a good enough colour? I wonder. Looks like it's very, very close to the one I've already painted on there. I actually even had to do a double take to make sure it wasn't the same one. Let's find out. So, rub most of that off onto a tissue. Now I'll take it to the back of my hand. It's a very scratchy brush. I don't know if this is going to be the best brush at all. I might have to really rescue this one. Let's leave it. I don't want to ruin what I'm going to do. Let's come back to it. I've got some other soft brushes here. That's a pretty nice one to be fair. Let's use that one instead. Okay, just a little bit on the end. Yeah, that feels a bit nicer on the old skin. The other one was like taking skin away. Let's just see what this does. I'm going to use it on the underside here because I remember this this side of the the rock, this particular one, being the side I'm going to glue down because I think this side's got better surface textures. So I'm just going to use this as a bit of a test. Be like, is this is this a colour that I want to dry brush onto these stones, or is it is it too close? I'll roll with it, see where it takes us. Maybe I'd have been better off just painting it that colour in the first place. I don't know. I just don't think the brush is very soft still. I think I need to go to an even softer brush. Clearly, I need to get those dry brushes that I was thinking about getting. Can I see any difference between the two? No. Do you know what? Stick down with some water. Let's get a softer brush. I've got a big old tank brush here somewhere, and that's really soft. And it's got really big bristles on it. That's a beautiful brush. So, let's. I don't think that colour's going to be any good. I'm going to move away from it. I'm going to go in um, with some Storm Vermin Fur. See a very, very rich brownie sort of grey. I'll give it a light covering on that. Bit of a shake, bit of a waz. Should have started with it's quite nice, nice tone there. Okay, back to the underside. Yeah, it's 
quite nice set. I'm just literally just playing with it, just to see if there's if it brings out any kind of subtleties. One thing I've learned from the dry brushing videos that I've been watching is like take your time. It's not it's not a quick fix, and I think that's how I've been using it wrong over all the years. Um, is that I've been doing it's like a, a quick highlight gets the job done rather than sitting there doing all the hard work. This is actually I can see it making quite a, quite a difference. I don't know if it picks up on camera very well. My lights are quite glary, but it is doing some nice. <laughs> Jess says, "Was it?" <laughs> It is doing some nice um, sort of subtle highlights there. And as I work my way through my other greys, this should, should come out quite well. I'm going to be looking for some contrast in a minute. So that's quite cool. Okay, cool. Let's, let's, let's roll with this colour. Making sure I come in at the right sort of directions to the details that are on these rocks to bring them up a little bit without kind of leaving great swathes of paint all over it. I just want to be picking out the edges subtly. It feels weird painting an actual stone, stone colours, but if you were just to leave it as a stone, it, it wouldn't blend in at all. Stick up like a sore thumb. Yeah, I'm getting some nice colour variations on there. D again, don't know if it's really showing up on the camera. I can see a little bit on there. My monitor that I view everything up back on is is really really poor quality. It's the only monitor I had that would fit in the area here, without taking any way anything away from my main rig. So um, it's very difficult for me uh, to able to check as I'm going. Okay, I'm going to go back to this one again. Just a bit heavier there. There's some really nice textures all the way along this edge here, all the way along with some real nice, like, slaty layers, because it is a piece of slate stone. Okay, I'm now going to move into one of the other greys. I'm going to move into some Dawnstone. I might mix a little bit of that with this. Just to stop it being a direct colour from the Tyranids. Just to have a, a little bit of a... A little bit of a mixture in there, see what happens. I will use another brush. Get some of that colour in there. Maybe 50-50. I think that sounds pretty good, doesn't it? says I, I like it all railway line oh that, that old railway line did for me that was grey stone it took you a few days it was a lot of railway line um yeah one of your commissions german railway line and all the ballast along the side of it it was just just dry brush after dry brush after dry brush it took days but there was like 16 feet of it i believe um, i was kind of proud of it in the end 
it did look really good and it was what was really good was the contrast of the um the rusted um steel rails all the way along um and the bits that were where the train would have gone along were, were um were all bright silver and it looked really really good i was kind of proud that it went to someone's commission actually it was thanks for letting me have a go <laughs> If you're interested, of course, in seeing that, I do believe that there are photograph records of it on Purple Lion Creations uh, over at Facebook. Um, so you should definitely go and check out Purple Lion Creations over there um, because here, Purple Lion Creations is my dad. <laughs> so naturally, I'm going to talk it up. Uh, but also, bespoke, handmade, tailor made, um, one off um, builds for any game, any tabletop thing. Doesn't even have to be a game, could be a display, could be uh, what, whatever. Um, you, you talk to my dad Jeff uh, and he makes it um, and his stuff is sought after all over the world even somewhere out in the outbacks of Australia um, you should definitely go and have a look at all of his stuff um, he caters for everybody and everything while I'm on it of course there are other um, companies that Easy8 I'm not going to say affiliates with but associates with very closely and um, these are people who I've just kind of met on the way think very cool offer great services and whatever and all of the links to those people are in the description of this video just down there so do please go and check them out because that is what Easy8 is all about it's not just about this being a painting club it's a community um, and it's always nice to share um, the different you know sort of uh, providers of services and businesses and vendors and everything that's out there not just people painting stuff and putting pictures of it up there but actually you know people providing you with stuff go and check them out there are people like um, Graham Henderson from Wet Palette Miniatures as a painting service absolutely phenomenal painting do go and check him out I've actually spoke with Graham directly really nice chap um, there is uh, Colin Farron over at Charlie Foxtrot Models who makes some of the best um, period laser cut terrain buildings that you'll ever see um, and I, I know Colin very well now um, a wonderful guy and, and provides a, a heck of a range of stuff second to none really um, you, you should definitely go check him out the man there's, there's loads of people um, in in the links in the description down down below so do go and check them out um, there is blots there is last man last bullet uh, oh, just there's so much go check them out why are you still here I like this little color that I've blended up here it's really good I'm just trying to get edges some edges to stand out they're looking kind of cool I'm just trying to work my way through like a a graduated effect and I'm gonna try and go really really bright and as I get brighter I'm gonna do it lighter but I'm gonna be persistent with it so it picks out but really defines just the edges of these little features so in some ways I'm doing like a dry brush filter doing the earlier colors I'm making sure that I hit larger areas to hit some of the flatter panels and then as I do the lighter colors just just doing the edges That's cool. Now I'm going to go in with just some straight up um, Dawnstone rather than mixing it with some Skaven Blight because it'll be a bit brighter now. So if I'm just going to go straight into the pot here with the dry brush and I will just, doesn't matter if I mix it in with a little bit of the other paint that I've already got in there because it's all a part of the same tone. And now it should come out even brighter against the back of my hand. Oh, it does. Nice. My partner's going to look at my hand later. I thought you were supposed to be painting your miniatures, not your hands. I'll paint what I want. <laughs> Don't talk to her like that. She'd beat me up. <laughs> so again now, just going in a little bit lighter. This colour's quite close to the last one i just done. Oops. Um, so I don't want to like completely override it, but just kind of just picking up the edges again. And now just on here again. This one's got some really nice sort of shapes and patterns there. A bit more grey.
Okay, put the Dawnstone away. And I'm going to come in with a little bit of Administratum Grey. This is my highlight colour. i still got a little bit in the palette there from the last colour. So I'm just going to take a little bit of this one. And I'm going to mix it, kind of blend it in the palette. To give me like an extra stage before it. And then I'll come straight in with some neat Administratum Grey. To do those last little highlights. There's my Dawnstone gone. There it is. I've kind of overpowered it. I've always said, haven't I, that this um, this bright grey is um, it's got a very strong pigment to it. That's better. Yeah, you can see the difference. Brighter, darker. There we are. Got quite a bit on the brush there. Let's try and remove that. Okay. I might even hit this with some interesting washes afterwards. Again, just to try and take it away from the Tyranid colours. Because as I'm starting to look at this now, it is even though I paint it with a different base colour, it is starting to get very, very close to the Tyranids. And it might look like a nice little bit of camouflage, but they are bright yellow. <laughs> so I don't think camouflage is a really good excuse. And um, I've got some really interesting um, washes to use, uh, which I've actually bought for the purpose of doing like grim dark um, contrasts and things. So I've got um, I've got the the red that I often use. Caraberg Crimson, which is a red stain, and recently I bought Celia Green Shade, which is basically um, like a, just a green wash. Uh, and when you're doing Grim Dark, one of the things that you can do is you could just put a little drop of red, a little drop of green on two different areas. Um, now, not covering the whole area, but you're basically adding very subtle tones and variations that just kind of break up the Grim Dark um, sort of overall feel. Um, and I, I bought them to kind of be, ex, you know, to experiment and have a good old play. Grim Dark is something I want to do very soon again. Um, so I, I've, I've got them on hand, and I might add them into this really, really subtly in just some places, just to add some sort of, you know, variation to the eye, so that the Tyranid doesn't just become this great big grey mass. But this is the dry brushing is working very well. see some cracks forming on the um, the base of the Tyranid, on the other kind of effects. Of course it's a Tyranid, everything's a Tyranid lately. Okay, we've got some really nice dry brushing effects going on here. Um, and I'm hoping that a nice bit of really bright grey will just be really good to finish it off. in those two tones there so that should look quite striking against it in just a minute I'll take quite a bit off of this one because I want it to be I don't want it to be affecting any of the flat areas really just the edges so it needs to be quite a small amount in the bristles and I just need to apply it with um, persistence Pretty cool. 
being quite light with how I go in now. Applying very minimal pressure. Just picking out those edges. That's really good. The difference already. Quite striking, huh? I like it. We're getting quite close to the end of the show this evening, um, so if you've got things that you want to say, if you've got things that you want to share, questions you want to ask, stuff you want to talk about, now's yeah, a good time to do it. Maybe we'll even be rejoined by Stafford. That's pretty cool. I like that. Quite a difference. I like it. I might actually go go in with the uh, the idea of the washes because it does look very similar because it is the same set of greys mostly to the tunes. It does look very similar to them and I want it to be broken up a little bit. So I might play around with some, you know, washes and things but use them very sparingly and maybe water right down. can even bring in a bit of non-oil really I suppose water that right down do it underneath and just kind of do some shadow play with it perhaps feel very chalky. Trying to work it in some of the awkward angles in there. There's a little bit here that hasn't really got any sort of um, highlight to it. Just trying to make sure that I like rotate the bristles of the brush into that area, get some lift. Push some of that colour in there. There we go. Okay, we'll try and do something similar with these little cork ones um, over the next few days. Perhaps these are pretty much ready for going straight onto the bases. We're not going to glue them down right now. Um, I'm going to see if I can play around with the colours a little bit more before I put them in place. Because um, if it all goes wrong, it means I can just stop painting them again with a little bit of ease rather than gluing them into, into place right now. Well, I quite like that. Lovely. And I'm just going to soak that in there because we are done with that. A lot of greys all over the place here. You know, a good old tidy up on the old workbench. Right, let's put the kind of fix over here. Let's bring the trigon in um, because we can have a little look at where I wanted them to go. You can see that the colours are quite close to the carapace, and I, I want to do something to break that up a little bit. Um, and but they do stand out more from the actual terrain from the ground. Uh, so it's quite an earthy colour down there, but it's still being grey, which is kind of cool. What I want to do is use these stones and kind of have it so that the um, the edges that have got a little bit of interest on them are in a position that you can view them. So if I remember rightly, I think one was kind of going to go here and the other one was going to go here-ish. I don't want to cover up where the paint looks really good. So I bring them in a bit more like that. Looks kind of cool. I think that's pretty good like that. That will be where they will be, I think. <laughs> Although you can't see them, so let me bring it up at a different angle. There we go. So they will sit here like that. Trying to 
of rotate it so you can see it but without them sliding away. Nice. Cool. And now to have a little check on the Khan effects and how that base is being affected. Um, you can see that it's starting to go kind of weird. Um, I'm just going to get a bit of a zoom on so that I can see better. Uh, so that I can better show you. Uh, if I bring my hands up we should get a little bit of autofocus going on there. You can see that it's starting to kind of peel up, bunch up, starting to dry up. It's going to look really weird for a while. Um, it does look a little bit more bulbous around this little piece of terrain in there, which is kind of cool. Yeah, pretty happy with it. Can you see how it's starting to crack on the edges? That looks really good, doesn't it? And this paint dries with a really nice chalky matte appearance and a nice colour. It looks completely different from what you see on there. Completely different. So there, oh, excuse me, hiccups again. There we go. Um, it, every time I come back to these models, it feels like I'm almost done. There always seems to be a little bit more to do. So I'm hoping that um, I'm going to have more time this week because my final exam for my maths is on um, Monday morning. Um, so I should be able to dedicate a little bit more time to this. But obviously with cats at the moment, it's going to be quite difficult. They are starting to chill out, which is nice. Uh, let's say one of them is poorly, so they do need a little bit of attention, but I might be able to get a bit of a break from them occasionally. Um, yeah, and basically I'm going to be experimenting um, with these colours. Um, the red here, the green, this is a beautiful colour once it, once you kind of see it out of the bottle. Um, I think it's Celia Green Shade. I can just see the colour through there now. Um, and I can have a little bit of an experiment on maybe the undersides of those rocks that were just painted and just see how it affects them, just see if it kind of lends any sort of variation in the appearances. And if it works really well, then I might even apply a little bit here and there to the actual cracked earth and just see what, what that does to it. Um, I am very keen to um, affect the colour of the dirt side of the Trigon base, this side over here, where it isn't cracked earth there's two I, I don't like this color very much and I like this color and I would like it to all blend together um, but we'll, we'll see we'll see what happens we'll see what happens when we get there uh, so if I can find a gray that matches that from green stuff well then I will buy that and I, I will apply it to my um, my ever-growing uh, store of paints here I've got another little stone here which is really really flat I only primed it I didn't do anything with it it's a little bit boring and uninteresting so I'm just gonna leave that one rubbish it can go over there and then these bad boys bad girls they can stay here uh, I'm pretty much gonna wrap up the show for this evening because there's not an awful lot I can do and fit it into just a few more minutes um, so yeah let's come away from here uh, it's been a really productive evening again getting the bulk of like you know just the boring stuff done although it is really exciting when that crackle paint dries uh, it's not so boring then it just actually looks really really cool it looks like that you're like a, a pro painter because yeah i sculpted all these kind of cool things that you didn't need to kind of put some crackle paint down it looks really cool hoping that i've got it a decent thickness all the way around looking great looking great um yeah so uh, with a, hopefully with a bit of time over this week uh, i sh should be able to come up into the studio get a little bit of work done at least get the the bases finished because there are a few bits and pieces i have to do on that trigon to get to get her finished and then hopefully i'm trying to be realistic but maybe in a couple of weeks with just a few hours here and there i, I should have them finished and then i'll take some photographs and put them up on instagram which would be great i need to have a little drink because i'm parched mm. It is so hot in here, my eyes are salty, it's crazy. Look at all the paint on my hands, mental. Anyway, I've had a really good fun evening, so thank you very much for stopping by. Um, if you have been doing any kind of projects working away this evening, uh, do let me know. Take pictures of it, stick it up on Facebook, uh, get talking about it, because I love it when you guys flood Facebook, and you do flood it as well. Oh, my cheeks are so rosy red. Um, you guys lately have been just putting up pictures and pictures and pictures of all your stuff, and it's really exciting to see you guys um, you know, getting some wins and victories in there. Staff's like, finished this whole collection. Uh, brilliant like who ever thought that would have happened on easy eight i don't that feels like a bit of a win in my in my book um so yeah i'm gonna leave it there for the evening um, i hope you guys have a brilliant week 
Uh, do stay in touch. I'll be here next week, as always, and I'm looking forward to bringing a different project to the workbench next week. Hopefully a little bit of time to, to plan and prepare for that. Something simple, but a little bit of terrain for some gas lands. So uh, stay in touch for that. Um, in the meantime, take care, stay safe, be kind, and I'll see you next week. So keep on painting. See you soon. Cheers now. Bye-bye. going to go and let the cats out now so you can come and join us on discord if you want to come and see them cats 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 what am i letting myself in for <laughs>